Hey there gamers, and welcome to another weekly Dreamlight Valley Breakdown. Our big topic this week is the newest developer showcase that released today. In today's video, we'll be taking a closer look at this exciting showcase while discussing the new features as well as some interesting theories about what else could be on the horizon. So I hope you're ready because we have a lot to talk about. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that I'm a small full-time content creator, so every like on this video can make a tremendous difference for me. Consider subscribing for more Disney Dreamlight Valley and gaming content. If you would like to catch more of my content, you can find me live on Twitch Monday through Friday. Links to both my Twitch channel and Discord server can be found in the video description down below. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Hey there gamers and welcome back to the channel. So of course, as we mentioned in the intro, the big topic today is going to be the developer showcase video that just released today. And there is a lot of exciting stuff in this video. I'm gonna have the video linked in the video description down below if you wanna check it out after you watch this. Essentially what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna be picking apart and talking about certain points in this video, some things I'm really excited for, some things I'm sure you guys are really excited for and with that let's dive right into it so today's showcase starts with community developer Courtney opening up and telling us a bit about Tiana and what to expect with some of these new quests so we're gonna play this portion of the video and we're gonna see exactly what Courtney reveals concerning Tiana her home her restaurant as you can see here in this image we get a really good look at Tiana's house and this looks amazing I think I might put it in my glade I'm not sure where are you guys gonna place Tiana's home let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's play this portion and then we'll talk about what we see. We're happy to welcome the much anticipated Tiana from Disney's The Princess and the Frog in our next free update. Coinciding with her arrival in the valley, delve into the magic of cooking, help out a little friend in need, and organize an event that's sure to bring villagers together all throughout the valley. Of course, your village wouldn't be complete without her iconic restaurant, Tiana's Palace. Put on your restaurateur hat and help Tiana get settled as she brings another source of flavor to the valley. On that note, Wow, that looked really good. I really like the look of Tiana's restaurant. Absolutely amazing. Let's go back and talk about some of the things we saw here. First off, I love the look of Tiana's character model. I think she's one of the better looking characters we've gotten. And the devs just did a great job with the character design here. Now, in this scene, there's also a new dress. Or at least I believe this is new. I don't think I've seen this. This may be in a star path or premium shop or could be a friendship quest reward. We're not sure as of right now, but it does look really good. I love the light reflection properties we're getting here. We also have some light reflection happening here on this tiara she's wearing that Tiana has on that looks really nice. I love the eye makeup too. She just looks great. Anyway, let's move forward a little bit. Now we see another scene of Tiana cooking here. Man, she looks good. Okay, but I just want to point out this is one of the first looks we've had at the inside of of Tiana's restaurant or that's what I'm guessing this is because there's nowhere like this in the valley I love this like roof arch we have here this golden archway the brick walling there's this little pastry holder here on the left you have some fresh veggies I'm very interested to see exactly how this restaurant is going to work is it going to be similar to Remy's will we be able to serve customers here and at Remy's to get through our star pads a little bit quicker will there be new features with this restaurant that are not available at Remy's I'm very interested interested about all these things I can't wait to find out but I have to say I am loving the look of the interior of this restaurant now Courtney also mentions help out a little friend in need for one of the quests and it shows this little croc so it definitely appears we're gonna have some kind of quest where we're aiding critters so I'm excited to see how that plays out and I'm also interested in what kind of rewards could come from this will we get some new companion skins maybe new companion animations I don't know I'm excited to see what this this quest brings into the game. Courtney also mentions organizing an event that brings all of the villagers together. My guess is that this will be Tiana's final friendship quest as this seems to be a common theme within Dreamlight Valley. But we also get some more insight into the interior of Tiana's restaurant here. And look at this beautiful picture here on the backstage with this setting sun, trees, some lily pads. I mean, this is gorgeous. This place is so elegant. Remy might be going out of business if he's not careful. I mean, this is a gorgeous restaurant. 
I also really love the new furniture we're getting, like these chairs, these tables, and we do see these placed outside in a moment. We'll talk about that. And finally, we get the reveal of Tiana's Palace in this video. Now, there have been some photos of Tiana's Palace that were teased already, so we've seen a little bit of the exterior, but this video did provide our first look at the interior. And just like we mentioned, we have some more of these unique dining sets here outside of the restaurant. But yeah, this just looks really good. And again, Remy, <laughs> you, you better start giving out more wrought iron because you might go out of business. Your customer loyalty program is, is not cutting it right now. Now we also get a little bit of a look at the restaurant at nighttime and man, it is so well lit. I love the light bulbs up on top, the big luminescent Tiana's Palace sign, the details here in the pillars. You can see some chipping on the granite or whatever that material is. I am just loving the look of Tiana's Palace. The only thing I'm not sure of is where I'm going to place it. Let me know where you're planning on putting Tiana's Palace. I'm definitely going to have to do some renovations around my valley. Following this look at Tiana's Palace, Courtney dives into another new feature, which is something I don't think a lot of people were expecting because we knew we were getting the restaurant and Tiana's home, but I don't think anybody expected a cart as well. Like we have Kristoff stall or a stall, maybe not a cart, but we have Kristoff stall, we have Mulan stall, and now we're gonna have Tiana's stall. And I have to say, I really like the functionality of Tiana's stall. Let's take a look. On that note, has your stomach ever been grumbling while on your adventures, but your inventory has turned up empty? By fostering your friendship with Tiana, you'll be able to unlock Tiana's meal stall to purchase various dishes to take with you on your adventures. Now, this is really interesting. I'm wondering if some of these meals are gonna rotate out because what we can see here, we have root beer, there's some beignets, there's a ghost fish steak, there's some chocolate chip cookies and some bell pepper puffs. Now, what makes this stall so unique is this is the only place and the only time ever in Dream My Valley that we've been able to buy prepared meals. Now, we're, we've been able to buy ingredients from Remy, but in the past, anytime we needed food, the only option was to cook it ourselves. Now, if you don't have the time or if you have an abundance of star coins, you'll just be able to buy cooked meals from Tiana's stall. But yeah, my big question with the stall is, are these food items going to rotate often? Will anything be staples on the, on the stall here? I would think that the beignets will be a staple, but I'm curious if some of the other food items are gonna circulate and it's just, you know, you check the card each day and you might find something really nice. And I'm also wondering what the price is gonna be, but this is a nice new feature because if you're limited on time or ingredients and you don't feel like doing a lot of cooking, you can just use your star coins to buy cooked meals. And also I must say, I do love the look of this stall. I don't know if I like it as much as Mulan stall, but I, I really like the functionality of it. And it does look really good. With the major Tiana reveals out of the way, the next thing Courtney gets into here are some star path reveals. So let's take a look at the fast approaching star path. We cannot wait for you to meet Tiana and all the magic she will bring to the valley. But you'll need something to wear to the grand opening of her restaurant, right? In our upcoming star path, you'll be able to unlock all kinds of clothing, hairstyles, makeup, and for All right, I'm gonna stop right there. Look at this kitchen set. That looks so good. Now, some of the items featured here we do already have in the game, but most of them, I believe, are going to be coming in the star, in the star path because that's what they're talking about here. So we already have this gothic window. We have this plant that you can kind of see on the left-hand side. We have this fridge. We have this stove. But I believe everything else we're seeing here is going to be in the star path. We have a new flooring, which looks amazing. I'm excited to see if that has some light reflection properties. This wall sconce up here is gorgeous. I love how it's like a lotus flower blooming on the light fixture here. And these granite topped kitchen sinks and kitchen counters look really good. This might be one of the best looking kitchen sets we've ever had come into the game. I also really like this cart we have here next to the villager. Very elegant, matches the rest of the kitchen decor really well. We can see this new wallpaper in the back and we have these new 1920s inspired outfits. This dress looks really good. I love the frill on the bottom. The green feather boa looks really nice as well. I'm excited to see what other kind of colors and variations we have of this. The male avatar's outfit is quite nice as well. I do like that it's shorter sleeved because that's gonna allow for you to wear bracelets, watch, 
watches and rings in Dream Snap, so that is always nice. I love the coloration of this as well. The trim around the vest, the orange tie, the slacks, and the shoes. It all looks really, really nice. Now, with all that said, there is one item that's really easy to miss that I think might be one of the most exciting items coming from this update. And what I'm talking about is this little lily pad decoration right here. And you may have missed this the first time you watched the showcase because this scene was only up for a few seconds. But after pausing it and taking a look around the room, this may be a very exciting new item for Dream Snaps. And the reason I say that is it appears to have some kind of sparkle animation. You can see light coming from within the bloom and then there's these sparkles hovering over it. So just think about that in a nature build for Dream Snaps, having a few of these scattered about putting off this glow and these sparkles, that's gonna be really, really cool to play with. Another star path reveal was Donald's snazzy look. Now this does look really really good. I'm loving this look, but you know, I talk about this often. I would love to get dream styles for villagers that we don't have dream styles for yet. And I feel like the Mickey and friends gang, they get so many dream styles. We already have Safari Donald. We have pirate Donald, and now we're getting this dapper Donald. And I, I don't know, I would have loved to have had a dream style for somebody else. Any of the characters that we don't have a dream style for just yet. Don't get me wrong. I love having Having some variety and I love the way Donald looks here but I would love to get dream styles for villagers that don't have any dream styles yet rather than adding on to the ones that already do that's just my opinion I do love the dream style but I figured I would add that in. Following the Star Path teasers, Courtney is going to pass it off to Rachel and Rachel is going to share some exciting new features coming in this update. Some of which we knew about and some of which we did not. What's an update without new features? Let's hop on over to Rachel who will let us know more about some of the improvements coming to the game this update. Thanks, Courtney. We're so excited to share that cross-platform play is coming to PlayStation consoles alongside this update. Now I've talked about this a lot since it was revealed. This is one of the most exciting things to ever happen with Dreamlight Valley. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this subject because we have a lot more to cover in this video. But what I will say is that the Dreamlight Valley community in a lot of ways has always been divided into two separate communities because they could not play together. Dream Snaps included. When it came to Dream Snaps, PlayStation was in their own challenge and everybody else was in their own challenge. Now, everybody's gonna be in the same challenge and that's so great because I can't wait to see PlayStation Snaps while I'm voting. And I'm also very excited to be able to tour PlayStation Valleys. I also know a lot of content creators that play on PlayStation and they've just been pretty sad about the fact that they can't interact with a lot of their community. So I'm just very, very happy to see this change coming to the game. And I think this was a great move by Gameloft. PlayStation users will soon be able to host and join Valley Visits with their friends on other platforms. Now, it's no secret that creativity lies at the heart of the Valley, so we wanted to make it even easier for you to realize your creative vision. Whether you dabble in decorating or treat your wardrobe as a key. A look at the new search feature in action. As you can see, the word tufted has been input, and then we get our results and you have tufted sofa, tufted bench, couch, armchair, everything with the word tufted. So that's really cool. Let me know how you feel about seeing this in action. I'm so excited to have a search feature. I know a lot of you are because this has probably been one of the biggest requests from the Dreamlight Valley community. So it's great to see the developers adding it. But what about new features that we haven't seen yet? This was revealed to us in one of Dreamlight Valley social posts last week. But what about things that have not been revealed? Well, let's take a look. This update brings much requested improvements to the wardrobe and furniture menus. We also wanted to make it easier to organize these menus to fit your own personal style. When you select a furniture or clothing item, you now have the option to mark it as a favorite or hide it. So this is incredible. And I was I was not expecting this feature, but it is so smart that they've added this in. The fact that we can favorite items now, it is just going to make decorating and designing your outfits so much easier because you'll be able to take the items that you use often and frequently and favorite them so you can find them at the snap of a finger. I love this idea. And also the ability to hide certain items is very handy. 
Because think about this when you're building a Dream Snap outfit. There may be some things that are high value, but they don't work really well with the challenge. And you're looking at all these items and you're having a hard time putting together your outfit. Well, now you can use the process of elimination. If certain things don't fit your vibe or don't fit the theme well enough for you, you can simply hide them. And that's gonna help you narrow down your results so you're not scrolling through a ton of options. And while I was not expecting this feature, I am very happy to see it. And it's nice to see it in action as well. Let's move on to see what else is coming in terms of new features. This will add the items to the new filter categories and make sure your favorites are pushed to the top of relevant lists. That's not the only way that we're empowering you to save your faves in game. Outfit presets are here. Gone are the days of manually recreating each look piece by piece. Simply save your current outfit as a preset, give it a name, and swap your style with the press of a button whenever you like. Now this is great. We've had the mannequins, which is one way to save our outfits, but mannequins can only be placed indoors. So if you do wanna swap your outfit, you're gonna to have to go inside of your house, walk up to a mannequin and hit wear. But now you can save your outfits on a whim. All your favorite outfits can be stored and saved in your presets. Now I'm not sure if there's gonna be a limit on this. I don't see why there would be, and they didn't mention one. So I think there's a good chance you'll be able to make as many presets as you would like, but it is possible there there's like a 10 or 20 preset limit. Time will tell, we'll know when this rolls out, but I wouldn't really be surprised if you could make as many as you wanted to. Now, while this was being revealed and demoed for us, we can see our options whenever we select an outfit preset. You can equip the outfit, overwrite the preset, which I'm guessing you can just edit it. You can change certain features of the outfit. You can add gloves or change the pants up, whatever you wanna do. You have the option to rename the preset and you have the option to delete the preset. Now that's it for the new feature features listed here, but Rachel did say something very, very interesting at the end of her segment. And I think this is going to be, whatever she's referring to here, I think it's going to be revealed sometime within the next seven days to hype up the update. Let's listen to what she closed with. That's not all the improvements we have in store for this update. So keep an eye out on our socials for more. That's not all the improvements we have in store for this update, so keep an eye on our socials for more. So there are more gameplay improvements that are coming with this update that we have yet to see. And like I said, they're going to be teasing this before the update. I'm thinking it's gonna be the ability to store villager houses. I think this is an easy change for Dreamlight Valley to make. We can already move houses between Eternity Isle and the Valley and the blog we saw last week said that they were trying to give players more ways and more space to decorate. Now, some theories out there have said, oh, we're gonna get interchangeable valleys so we can have different valley builds. And while I do think that is a possibility, I don't think that's necessarily what we're gonna see in this update. If a feature like that comes, it's probably gonna come much later, but I don't know, I'm not a dev. Maybe that will happen, but I feel like logistically that would be a bit complicated for the developer team with everything else they have going on. Whereas the ability to just hide or store houses would be such an easy change for them to make. Now we can already hide and store premium houses. So why not be able to do the same thing with villager houses? After all, even if you've moved a villager house to Eternity Isle, those villagers will still spawn and show up in the valley. Another reason I think this is going to be the case is Gameloft knows they need to sell more premium homes. It's a big seller, but who's gonna buy premium homes when they have no room for premium homes? This is why I believe we will have the ability to store people's houses or villagers' houses, and that's going to clear up space, not to mention some houses just don't go with certain builds very well, like Vanellope's house is very niche. Daisy's house is very cartoony. So these houses don't always fit into the builds people do. And they usually end up having to exile them to Eternity Isle. Um, looking at myself here. So introducing the ability to store villager homes would be a very easy thing for Dreamlight Valley to do, and it would allow for placing more premium homes, which means more sales, and it would allow players to make their builds the way they want. They won't be forced to have these houses around if they do not like the way it fits into their imaginative builds. But yeah, let me know what kind of features you think Rachel is discussing, and let me know what you think the dev blog was referring to when they 
said they were going to be able to give us more space to decorate with. I've had, I've heard some creators say, you know, we're going to get different valley presets. And while I do love that idea, like I said, I think that would be a bit complicated for the devs to do, but hey, it might actually happen. And I would love to see that. I think what the devs were referring to is something a bit more simple because I'm looking at this from a development standpoint for game development. What's something that they could do that would be simple that players would appreciate and would allow for more space. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. Let's dive into the next part of this showcase and take a look at what's coming next for Eternity Isle. But shifting gears, why don't we head over to Eternity Isle? It's time to return to Ancient's Landing as the story continues in Act 3, the final act of the Disney Dreamlight Valley, a Rift in Time expansion pass, Treasures of Time. First off, I love the music that's playing. It has this like ominous vibe and I definitely think things are getting out of hand for Jafar. We're gonna elaborate on that a bit more down the road, but for now, let's watch a bit more of this Rift in Time reveal. Our story left off with Jafar stealing the spark of imagination, causing the sky to break again. With these rifts threatening everything and everyone, you'll need to race against time to turn now let's pause right here. Steamboat Willie, you know, we this was revealed in a post yesterday, but we have this really cool new Mickey Dream Style. And I know I was just saying, we don't need more Dream Styles for more villagers that already have a bunch of them. And Mickey has more Dream Styles than anyone else in the game. Though he is Mickey. He's like the face of Disney in a lot of ways. So I get it, I get the favoritism, you know? And also I don't mind Mickey getting this Dream Style because it is so different, it's so unique it almost turns him into a new character. So I really love the way this looks. And I'm just happy Oswald's gonna have a black and white buddy to hang out with. That's, that, you know, warms my cold heart. Turn back the effects of Jafar's schemes by using your own ingenuity and imagination. Gather your villagers, stock up on mist, and prepare to discover what lies beyond the doors of Jafar's palace, hopefully foiling his plans for good. I wanna mention here, if you are low on mist right now, it is a good time to grind mist. We have this update coming in seven days and Ryan did specifically state stock up on mist. So we know we're gonna need some mist for this new expansion update. So take a look at your mist levels if you're low, do some time mending. I do have a mist guide. I'll have it linked in the video description. Let's continue. After that's all said and done, Jafar will then join the valley, bringing with him new quests and rewards. So there it is. After that's all said and done, Jafar will join the valley, bringing new quests and rewards. Now, I don't think anybody's surprised by this. I've always considered Jafar to be the final character we unlock in this expansion. But how is that going to work? You know, Jafar has stolen the spark of imagination. Everything seems to be going right for Jafar. So if we suddenly shut him down and stop him, why would he even want to move to the valley? How is that going to work? Well, I've had a theory on this for a while. Personally, I think Jafar is in over his head and things have gotten very out of hand. So I don't think we're only going to have to foil Jafar and stop Jafar, but I also think we're going to have to save Jafar. In the previous quest lines, it became pretty obvious that Jafar did not know the true extent of the power the spark of imagination held, and he stated he had only read the legends about it. So yeah, I think Jafar is in over his head. Not only are we going to stop him, we're going to save him, and then we're going to convince him to move to the valley. That's my theory. Let me know what you think about that. Let's continue. We won't spoil how you could possibly get to this point, but we can't wait for you to experience it for yourself. Now we can't end this developer update without a final important bit of information. Our next free update arrives on all platforms on August 21st. All right, no big surprise there. I've been talking about this ever since they revealed they were gonna do a showcase for this update. The last time we had a developer showcase was for the Daisy update. And at the end of that showcase video, they revealed that the update was dropping seven days later. Dreamlight Valley can be a bit predictable sometimes when it comes to the way they do their marketing. They typically follow the same kind of pathway. So as soon as they said we were getting a showcase today, that solidified August 21st for me. That's what I was telling everybody on my stream. We've been talking about this all week. I was like, yeah, it's coming August 21st. I'm 99% sure it's coming on August 21st. I may not be surprised, but I am very excited, especially to see it confirmed. Thrilled. Can't wait for Wednesday. If 
you would like to watch the update live the moment it releases, you can catch me next Wednesday, August 21st on Twitch live at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll actually be live a few minutes before that, probably like 8.45 a.m., just so we can hype up and then download the update as soon as it drops and just dive right into it. But if you would love to get a fun first look at the expansion update and the Tiana update, the star path and more, check my video description down below for a link to my Twitch channel and Discord server. I am so excited to dive into this update and I just really wanna share that experience with you guys. If you've never been on Twitch, 9 a.m. August 21st will be a great first time to experience it. I can promise you that. Now, following this, they also confirm that the Rift in Time expansion update is coming out on the same day. No big surprise there. As again, that's what happened with Daisy. Let's just finish up this showcase and then we'll dive into the next portion of today's video. Owners of the Disney Dreamlight Valley, a Rift in Time expansion pass will also unlock Act 3, Treasures of Time, on the same day, marking the thrilling conclusion of the expansion pass. As always, stay tuned to Disney Dreamlight Valley's social channels for more news and let us know what you're most excited about. See you in the valley! All right, so we have our update names. Dapper Delight is the update name for the free update. The expansion pass update is called Treasures of Time, which my camera's covering a little bit here, but I read it to you, so it's fine. So again, let me know what you think about these reveals, about what we're seeing here. What are you most excited for between these two new exciting updates rolling out in just one week? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So with the showcase out of the way, there is one more thing I would like to touch on in this video. So if you've been watching my weekly Dream Eye Valley breakdowns, you know I always check my mail, I look and see how we did on Dream Snaps, then I show my Dream Snap and we talk about it, we do a premium shop review, but in today's video, we are already about a half an hour in and we had so much to talk about concerning the showcase. So the rest of the content I usually put in these videos is going to be kind of just speed ran. I'm just going to throw Throw this information out there so first up let's check my mail i'll see how i did on my dream snap and then i'll reveal it to you and we'll talk about the shop briefly so these results are from the valley views challenge and boy did i love this challenge it was so fun coming up with like a great way to do like a view overseeing like a beautiful area we ended up getting a great rank here in the top 500 still coming in at 351 this week very excited let's take a look at the submission and here it is this is one of my favorite submissions i'm so glad it performed well i had so much fun i've always wanted to make a fairy area now usually in this part of the video i would tell you all about the dream snap but we're kind of out of time today so i won't be doing the usual breakdown but i did really want to share this with you guys because i am so fond of it i think it's one of my most beautiful dream snaps and i had a lot of fun doing a fairy inspired build now concerning this week's premium shop lineup there is nothing new and i've showcased all of these items before in previous videos so there's no need for a showcase today. I will say I am very thankful that I can save my moonstones this week. We do have a new update coming in seven days. So yeah, hang on to those moonstones if you can, guys, because there's a lot of new stuff on the horizon. Now, if you do get any repeat items that you really want, you know, if you want to spend your moonstones, there are some great things in the shop this week. Winter Palace has its own fireworks. It's really cool. Definitely worth checking out. We got the Fiery Raven returning. That is an old Star Path item. And also another old Star Path item with the Ranger set. This is from the very first Star Path. So if you're a collector, this might be a good time to pick this up. If you like collecting all the items, it, it, who knows when we'll see this again. Lastly, we have the Return of the Desert Palace, the Return of the Red Panda Pillars, the Maleficent Wings, and Bell's Royal Tools. Now, Royal Tools are really expensive, but this tool set does have one of the best hourglasses. I would say it is second best whereas the best royal hourglass would be the electric parade variant that's just my opinion anyway yeah let me know what your thoughts are in the premium shop this week nothing new no discounts but a lot of great returning items are you excited to be saving your moonstones and there we have it another weekly dreamlight valley breakdown on the books again if you would like to enjoy 
the update live on August 21st. Please come by our Twitch channel and hang out. You'll make some amazing friends. Get to chat with me in real time. Get to see my real time reaction to everything. It is a lot of fun. But if you can't do that, don't worry. I'll upload the stream to YouTube probably the day afterwards. So keep an eye out for that. If you found today's video helpful, informative, or simply entertaining, do me a very big favor and hit that like button for me as it helps more people discover my channel. Consider subscribing for more Disney Dreamlight Valley and gaming content. As always, thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you enjoy the future of Disney Dreamlight Valley. Today's YouTube video shoutout redeemed on Twitch goes to my good friend Tia. I'm so happy that both you and your sister found my channel and became my friends. Never forget, you're a big part of what makes this community so special.